War wolves are awful. As some of you have said in my comments, they really have no business being in Werewolf the Apocalypse, some of you have said. Well, buckle up, because today we're going to be talking about them. Hello everyone, welcome to the Maple Table, my name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss lore around some of your favorite role-playing games, such as Starfinder, Werewolf the Apocalypse, World of Darkness. If that's something you're interested in, I would love to have you join me at the table. You can do so by hitting that subscribe button and that bell notification to be notified when my videos are available. Some of you really didn't like the mockery breeds being involved in Werewolf the Apocalypse and even in 20th Anniversary Edition. But my Yaren video did pretty well, so guess what? We're covering the Warwolves today. Warwolves are the first successful mockery breed that were created. They were formed from lots of stolen genetic material from an existing werewolf, as well as tons of research that was done by developmental neogenetics amalgamated. Try to say that one five times fast. I did many takes on this. Neurodynamic Laboratories. That is the name of the special projects group in Pentex who created the mockery breeds. NDL for short. NDL's goal was very simple. Create a genetically modified superhuman that was capable of killing the werewolves. And Neurodynamic Laboratories eventually did succeed in creating the first mockery breed, and this was the Warwolves. They did have some unfortunate side effects, very limited intelligence, they were not spiritually connected because they were a genetic creation, an abomination if you will, and because they had no spiritual connection, they had no gifts, they had no rights, they were not able to make connections in this way. And they still had the same weakness to silver that the werewolves did. Warwolves were artificially created. They were made from stray dogs, captured wolves. You sprinkle in a little bit of NDL secret sauce, the werewolf genes, and you get a warwolf. Warwolves can eat meat. That's about the only thing that they can eat. The unfortunate side effect for a warwolf is the only meat that satisfies is human flesh or werewolf flesh, and the human flesh has to have the werewolf gene in it. Basically, you have to be a kinfolk, or a black spiral dancer. And because Pentex does tend to keep these things in a laboratory and only release them as needed, it does mean that a warwolf spends most of its existence in perpetual hunger. Pentex does its best to keep them away from the black spiral dancers, but eh, accidents happen. Warwolves in their human forms look like basically emaciated humans. They're very, very sick. In the only two other forms that a warwolf or this mockery breed can take, which would be lupus or crinos, in their wolf form, they look like sick dogs. Their fur is patched and matted, they're drooly, and they just have that crazy hunger in their eyes. A crinos werewolf looks basically like the same. It is just taller, sickly, skinny, and again, hungry. When the warwolves change their shape or shift forms, it's actually mildly mystical in nature, so this would alert any mages in the area as well. And thus far, none of the Pentex scientists have observed any natural mating abilities. It just hasn't happened, and the scientists believe that it just can't happen. So what is developmental neogenetics amalgamated? I'm going to call it DNA for short. Not to be confused with the genomic DNA. DNA is a privately funded Pentex subsidiary company. Their main focus is actually on genetic engineering and mapping the human genome. They view lycanthropy as a disease, and in their minds, it will destabilize the entire human race. From their perspective, it needs to be cured. In 1976, Mitchell Howick founded DNA with a patient that he was treating. In the run-up to the early 70s, Mitchell Howick had actually achieved a PhD in genetics. He was treating a patient who we will call Alan for Lou Gehrig's disease. Alan was also a brilliant scientist in his own right, and he assisted Howick in his treatment. And in 1976, that's when they both co-founded DNA, Developmental Neogenetics Amalgamated. Because they also both came from old money families, the starting of a biotech in the 70s was not a big deal. 
Their mission statement was simple. Understand the body, mind, and spirit by understanding the building blocks of life. Eventually, the company grew and they were able to open more branches throughout the United States and into Canada as well. DNA didn't start out going specifically after werewolves and the changing breeds. They were also trying to eradicate other diseases like cystic fibrosis. But they did pay special attention to a gene that they had identified in the changing breeds to which they called GLS. There is no translation as to what GLS stands for. It's just simply the term that they gave the gene that uh, all the changing breeds have. So while DNA was trying to figure out how to rewrite the human genome and get rid of the changing breed gene, NDL was trying to figure out how to harness and weaponize the changing breed gene. And through a series of Pentex acquisitions and mergers, NDL was able to steal scientific research and documentation from DNA to which NDL used to further their own weaponization of the changing breeds. Developmental Neogenetics Amalgamated, while formed in 1976, got its first big break in 1992. What happened was a new and inexperienced glasswalker walked into the laboratory, got himself captured, and this really helped DNA further their research. They were able to learn much about the werewolf changing breed and through various means of interrogation. They were able to find some kinfolk as well, which they captured and also used as science experiments. Neurodynamic Laboratories was able to steal some of DNA's research, as I mentioned. The reason that they wanted to weaponize the changing breeds was because they had dealings and interactions with the Black Spiral, and they were proving unreliable. They wanted something that they could control and that would be reliable. They didn't want to see the eradication of the changing breeds. They wanted to, like I said, weaponize them. Now what's really scary with DNA, developmental neogenetics amalgamated, they were able to map the genomic sequence of the changing breeds. And not only that, they were able to create a weaponized virus that would specifically target kinfolk, werewolves, changing breeds anybody who had the changing breed gene. This virus, this weaponized virus, was called Project Reaper. Project Reaper was a worst case scenario. If GLS had gotten out of control, and GLS was their name for the changing breed gene, if it was running rampant throughout human society, they would just release this virus and mass kill everyone. I would argue that NDL did not know that they had this, or when they did their data theft, this wasn't completed yet. Based on all their data points and all the knowledge that DNA had acquired on changing breeds up to this point, humans who carried the virus were referred to as GLS-1H carriers, and wolves who carried the changing breed gene were referred to as GLS-1L. They even knew as much to map the Métis, or Metis, depending on how you pronounce it, as GLS-2. So they had quite a bit of information. Due to the messy nature of this virus, DNA has refused to use it. And because their worst case scenario hasn't come through yet, they just kind of keep this locked away behind a firewall in a dark room. Nobody knows this exists, except for some real high ups in the company. So, where were we at at the end of this? What are my final thoughts on the Warwolves? Well, I think telling stories with your pack and exploring the fact that Pentex knows a lot about the genetics of Werewolves and the Changing Breeds makes for a much more interesting story. The Warwolves, eh, you guys were right. The more I looked into them, they're just not that interesting. I view them almost as like a throwaway mob. You could use them as a first encounter, something to harass your party there. It's just an enemy. Now the company and the power plays that go on between the companies, not only within Pentex, but within these two warring biotech companies, that is much more interesting. And that makes for much more interesting storytelling. And if you're going to be playing in a city setting, 
I think using one of these two companies would be a good idea. Not Pentex, but the DNA or the NDL. If your players have no history or experience with Werewolf the Apocalypse, let them come across the DNA Reaper virus. That would be horrifying, especially if you can build that up the right way. And if they gang up and attack the laboratories or attack the company, who knows, it might become a self-fulfilling prophecy that they would view this as a major threat and release the virus. I would like to give a huge thank you to all of my patron supporters, and there's a new addition to the list now, BA Bravo. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you, all of you, my patrons, you're wonderful. If you enjoyed today's video, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up, as that helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And it lets me know to make more of this for you. If you want to get more videos like this from myself, then please hit that subscribe button with that bell notification so you don't miss a video. Up on the screen, I will have a video that I have selected for you. YouTube will have also made a recommendation for you. My name's Nathaniel. You've been watching The Maple Table. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.